Hi everyone, I'm Associate Professor Ko Tae Yong. I'm from Singapore University of Social Sciences. My specialization is in atmospheric science, which is the study of weather and climate. During October to December, uh, Singapore slowly moves uh, towards a different monsoon season, the Northeast Monsoon, and so the rainfall would increase uh, every month. It begins from about uh, 150 millimetres over the month of October to about uh, 300 millimetres uh, per month in December. Typically for a La Nina uh, phenomenon, it is the cold phase of the oscillations in the Pacific Ocean temperature. So when it's cold over there, what we get over here is actually more rainfall. The higher rainfall amount together with the greater cloud cover leads to a cooler temperature uh, in Singapore. And also storms uh, tends to be enhanced. For example, longer duration rainfall, uh, heavier storms, and some of these can whip up a very strong gust of wind. Let me first draw in Singapore. It's a warm tropical island. And then, essentially to our east, you have this vast Pacific Ocean. Usually, over the Pacific Ocean, there would be evaporation, leading to cloud formation and rain. When the Pacific Ocean is uh, cool, like during a La Nina event, then this process is suppressed. When the surface is cooler, it's like you put less heat into the system. That means the system is more stable. That means you have less up and down motion in the air. That means you have less condensation into clouds. So rainfall is suppressed. And the net result of it is that the atmosphere turns cold. Cold air is also dense. Dense air means it's heavier. It weighs down more on the surface, so you have a high pressure here, causing winds from the east to bring moisture converging in our tropical island of Singapore. Now, normally, we have a hot surface over here, and that creates instability in the atmospheric column, and so there will be up and down motion. We call this up and down motion of the air convection. This convergence of moisture is like supplying this up and down motion with more water vapour. With more water vapour, it condenses to form more clouds. And more clouds means you have more rain. The major event that we had 2010-11, the reason we code it over two years is because it's usually towards the end of the year. First of all, a La Nina event is the intensity of it is judged by how low the surface temperature gets over the central Pacific Ocean. The surface temperature of the ocean is not evenly distributed. It ranges from high 20s in the western Pacific Ocean to the low 20s in the uh, Eastern Pacific Ocean. In the La Nina case, it means when the ocean cools more than 1.5 degrees Celsius below the normal uh, long-term average, then we consider it to be a strong event. The long-term average here refers to a 30-year average. La Nina and its cousin, El Nino, they are natural phases of oscillations in the Pacific Ocean temperature and the atmosphere's reaction to it. They would happen even without climate change. Put it this way, even in the time of uh, Sangila Udama, there would have been La Nina episodes as well. Having said that, it is of course conceivable that climate change would interact with natural uh, variations. So it remains a, a hot topic of research. And this part, the science has not been conclusive so far. <laughs>